how are you celebrating Pride Month, Dan? Awkward question time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how to joke about that, but but here's here's the reality. We are Christians. Yes. We're living in a world. I'm Ben. You're Dan. We're two of the teaching pastors here at Life Fellowship here. And I thought it would be an, to do an interesting conversation to have of how do we, as followers of Jesus, navigate our our cultural expression or celebration of Pride Month. It's June. It's LGBTQ plus celebration. And and I don't know about you, but it feels like every year there it just keeps ramping it's up, up. And it, it yeah. almost feels like um it almost feels like the energy level is is equaling thing holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Just the way people are celebrating it. Yeah. Um it, it's not even just hey let's acknowledge it. It's it's very celebratory. It's all month long. And it I'm sure a lot of people um have a lot of questions. They have a lot of emotions. They have a lot of well, how do I navigate this this month with children, for myself, uh, in my job, workplace. There's so many things that yeah, this... And particularly when you consider where the culture is right now, yeah. by not bowing before the idols that our culture has now erected, mm-hmm. you do endanger your livelihood, you your reputation. Yeah. Uh, you can be canceled. Yeah. Um, and while we sometimes joke about that, it is a very, very serious issue yeah. that we that uh, that Christians are going to have to navigate. Carefully. I mean, it's it's safe for you and I. I hate to even even have this thought, but it's it's safe for you and I to have this conversation because it, we're it, pastors. It, it it's safe to an extent, but we don't know where the culture is going, right, right. and things that were safe ten years ago in yes. other countries are no longer safe. Yeah. So I and, mean, and this will hang out in the internet forever, right? Yeah. I mean. One day you and I will be canceled, but but the whole idea is um, we we believe in a in a orthodox biblical uh, sexual ethic, yeah, right? That's only I mean, what about six thousand. I mean, years we're old, not right? we're not going to hide what we believe. Right. Um, and and you know when we have these conversations, even in this short amount of episode, this doesn't encompass the entire idea. If you want to understand how we feel about people with same sex attraction and some of these issues, we you and I did about three episodes with. Uh, our friend Jim Childs last year when we did our um, Heart, Mind, Soul seminar with them, mm-hmm. him and his team. Uh, and and Jim is someone who's a follower of Jesus, was on is a pastor, a missionary, um, is someone who got saved out of the homosexual lifestyle. But we had three episodes that dealt with a lot of the Christians relating and those kinds of things. But, but I want to narrow the focus of this conversation because I think that there are, you have parents that are trying to figure out what do I do with my kids who are watching Nickelodeon and there's a drag queen on Blue's Clues, mm-hmm. right? Or there's a some other person, you know, there, there's an advertisement celebrating this or, um, you know. Or it's part of the public school part curriculum. part of the public school curriculum. That, or, or then you have the other end of the spectrum. You have adults who are saying, if I don't wear this pin or I don't, you know, whatever, if I don't do something, put a flag on my cubicle or whatever it may be, I, I could be punished. So, I mean, these are real life issues and questions and struggles that I think a lot of people have regarding how do I navigate this month as being faithful to Jesus Christ, but also I don't want to be an obnoxious Christian right. that makes people who identify in these ways feel like I hate them because mm-hmm. I don't hate them, right? So what do we do, Dan? Yeah. You have all the answers. I'm going to stop talking. Yeah, I, I wish what we had done on this <laughs> is done one of those those famous episodes that we do where we each take a different side. Oh, that man. would have been interesting. I know what side I would have chosen. But now, no, the reality is, is, is these are times when we need to be very wise, but we also need to be very principled. Mm. And um, so there's a lot of folks in the evangelical movement who are – uh, reassigning their responses to to things like this in order to demonstrate their tolerance or their lovingness or their compassion or their concern for people as individuals uh, for the the you know the the traditional Christian ethos of uh, love the sinner hate the sin right um, but in doing so they ignore the sin and love the person mm. and not only do they love the person they accept the person not only do they accept the person they embrace the person not only do they embrace the person they celebrate them. and so yes. it just keeps getting yes. deeper yes. and deeper into it yes. and and so um but i think it's time that some of us as christians develop backbone about things that are right and wrong mm-hmm. and understanding that sometimes taking a stand extracts a price 
there may be days in our future, they may already be here, where it will cost you a promotion. Mm. It may cause you discomfort mm. uh, to decline to celebrate something. And, and, and you say, well, well, you know, it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a matter of this, it's a matter of that. You know, we can rationalize all we want to, but, but acting on a same-sex attraction, celebrating immoral activity, which is defined as immoral by the standard of Scripture. And by the way, it's not just our Scriptures. It's the Islamic Scriptures mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. They like to hate on Christians about this position, but this is a, this is a you know, whether it's the Jews or the or the uh, Christians, the, or the, the major monotheistic religions, yeah, all are histor- cons- historically. Yeah, now, yeah. Some of them are shifting, but historically have rejected homosexuality as a moral lifestyle, mm-hmm. and and um, so so we have to be in a position where if if we're going to start modifying our theology to accept societal values, then why are we practicing religion at all? Mm. In fact, we have a new religion then, and that is the worship of the culture. Yeah, and I think that, honestly, what you just said there is really important. What we're seeing is the is the evolution in the introduction of a new religion. That's really what, what we're seeing in, 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 propagated and released. It's, it's the, the, this idea, and I here, let me just say this. There is a difference between the LGBTQ plus movement and people who live out those those lifestyles, mm-hmm. okay? We always have to differentiate the two because I think as a Christian, we, we need to be able to have the courage to stand up against the movement. But it does not mean that I must, you know, I, I look at the person. There, there are some people, I mean, I've had conversations with, with uh, people who identify as homosexual or lesbian, and they would tell me, you know, I don't really care about the whole marriage thing. You know, I, I just want to live my life quietly with my my partner or whatever, but they're not these rabid crusaders. And, right. and I think we really need to understand the difference between the movement and the actual individual. Well, yeah, and it sometimes distorts things. As often as I like to say, you know, Westboro Baptist Church does not in any way reflect <laughs> the values of Baptist, <laughs> Christians, Kansans, or any, you know, they right. represent 20, 20 extreme yeah adherence. individuals yeah yeah so and to some extent that is true other than the fact that the lgbq t movement is indeed part of a philosophical agenda yes. yes and that agenda is making rapid progress right now that not only demands acceptance it demands celebration mm-hmm. and not only does it demand celebration now it if you were to have a difference in opinion over this you are hateful you are the enemy right. you are uh, a neanderthal you know right. l- you right. pick the pejorative right and and so uh, it, it comes down to now there is a societal pressure in some elements of our culture and in some locales that says if you do not celebrate this, you are basically a hateful person or right, whatever. Right. And at some point, we have to say enough. We have yeah. to. By the way, the freedom to speak our mind is constitutional, and the freedom to be silent is also constitutional. Mm-hmm. And it may simply mean that you don't participate in some things. For example, this is we're not the first country that has had holidays that celebrate bad values or <laughs> pagan. <laughs> right. Pagan, you right. know, I mean, the yeah. the Incans and the Aztecs. They, you know, they had holidays where they sacrificed virgins and babies. Yeah. Uh, the Romans, my, oh my goodness, goodness, they had yeah. hundreds of holidays. Pagan celebrations. Yeah, and they celebrated galore. them by, you know, the most debauched ways yeah. possible. Um, and, and the and you know, in those days, there were Christians, and the Christians had to choose to to just not observe it. Yeah. So, I, but I would say not observing it is a biblical response. And I would also say that observing it in order to fit in, observing it in order to keep your job, observing it in order to be liked, mm-hmm. observing it uh, for, for a variety of reasons can also be sinful for the believer. Yeah. Because when we endorse and celebrate sin, we're violating Romans 1, we're violating yeah. uh, the principles of light and darkness. And I believe that as practicing believers, we have a biblical obligation to to in a appropriate way, resist sinful practices innocent among us. Yeah. And the fact that we have other sins we struggle with does not in any way negate our responsibility Absolutely. to stand against the, these sins that are at, at the core. All right, so, so you just said something. I think Let's just kind of take a side cul-de-sac little conversation. You know, when people want to bring up, well, you want to 
elevate homosexual homosexuality or whatever it is and but you know you, you don't seem to care about divorce or or um uh you know gossip or things like that here's here's what i would say to that no one it's not it's not that someone who if someone came to our church and said hey i'm a i'm someone who's you know i'm a gay man or i'm i'm a lesbian am i welcome at your church my answer is absolutely you're welcome at our church but what do you mean you know am i you know what do you mean by that is really important because if you if you mean by that is you know will will you accept me well do you mean will i will i will i celebrate what you're doing no i won't because mm-hmm. what i believe is that all of us all of us are sinners all of us have different sins that offend god and i'm not going to ignore one i mean there, what what we should all do is be honest with about our own sin yeah. right and, and we're not trying to elevate sins is worse than others but one of the reasons why i think it might be feel like that is because we're the ones just saying no we're just calling this a sin when it's celebrated and we don't want to celebrate sin so maybe it sounds like we are elevating the sin among, amongst other sins but no one's no churches are going around saying man divorce is great or you know all these other things that that sometimes they they we get you know, lumped in together and saying, well, you, you know, you're not making a big deal of these things. Yeah. And I, and I think also wise arguments that counter these are, are appropriate to have, y- you know, they say, well, why aren't, why aren't you worried about divorce? When we have an entire month dedicated to the celebration of divorce, you'll be hearing from <laughs> me again. All right. And that's true. And well, you should, you should have to observe that out of respect to us. Okay. Next January 21st, are you willing to observe national right to life day with me? Yeah, you know, yeah. th- these are legitimate questions mm-hmm. that we should be asking. So, and I don't demand that someone who's pro-abortion honor the the Holocaust of abortion and the and the anniversary on Ro- of Roe versus Wade. I don't I don't expect anybody to to join me in that who would violate their conscience or their position or anything else. And, and nor should I be expected to join you in something that violates my conscience, my religious beliefs. And and sometimes you have to use some pretty just plain out obviously logical arguments to simply yeah. you know set up your boundaries. Absolutely. And 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 by the way, I would also say this if they tried to uh, to to penalize me at some way i'd absolutely go to the courts over it yeah because these are fundamental rights that all of us should enjoy whether you're gay or straight or whether you're black or white or whether you're male or female there are certain constitutional protections among them being the freedom of worship and the freedom of speech that are at stake in how we celebrate absolutely so as a result we need, these are these are issues worth fighting for the right to celebrate or the right not to celebrate yeah. are important parts of our national ethos. Yeah. Well, one of the things I think is really important is um, parents being vigilant mm-hmm. during this season. Yes. Park on this one. I, I really think that if you are a parent who just gives your kids the, not the iPad or just lets them watch cable, whatever, like you have to understand that they are going to be purposefully and intentionally indoctrinated to think about, to think to have these secular views uh, or, or, and I think if, if you don't think it's going to happen to your child, it will. I mean, Mm -hmm. I was talking to another parent who was, he's got kids in a private Christian school in this area. And he was saying how even, even the, to, to teach the biblical principles that we're talking about was met with pushback by some parents and by some kids in a Christian school. Right. And if you think that just because you're you have the right beliefs that your kids will have the right beliefs um and and check your brain at the door and don't realize this is going to be they are going to be bombarded with these messages. Yeah. And I'd like to be specific on this. If I were the parent of a child in a public school setting and they were to have an assembly to celebrate Pride Month and to explain to the children of their school and this is happening all over the country. Yes. The, the importance of, of celebrating the, the LGBTQT plus uh, uh, values and, and so forth, I would insist, I'd be notified in advance, I would insist that my child would be excused without penalty, and if they didn't, I'd sue them. Mm. Because, again, as long as parents capitulate to the That's higher right. agenda, yeah. it is going to continue unabated. Yep. But if 20 percent, 30 percent of the parents went down there and said, not my kids, yeah. and brought them back home, it would catch some attention, and it, and, and it should. Yeah. Uh, and, and the other thing I would also say this. The day has long passed where you can set your kids down in front of Disney or Nickelodeon or TV Land or any of the other shows that are, you know, 
geared for it for kids, and let them watch television unattended yeah. just because you need a babysitter so you can fix dinner. Yeah. And we've all been tempted to do that. We've all probably done that at some time. If you've got small kids, you just know this is part of your reality. But those days are now past. You are not wise if you're not watching what your kids, pre-screening something, your kids, what they are consuming, because the agenda is there. Yeah. And by the way, in, on what planet, on what planet, is it cool? Is it acceptable? Is it common? Is it sane at any level to let drag queens talk about their lifestyles in public libraries? And it's happening all over the country. <laughs> and you know why it's happening? Because homosexual activists, including the drag queens, are organizing. They're demanding the right to have access to your children so that they can desensitize them to the abnormalcy that is their lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. Now, if they want to party every Saturday night down at the local drag bar and do all of their RuPaul stuff, they can certainly do that. But the day that you start bringing that into my home, in my publicly supported and publicly funded library, I need to speak up. Mm. And I think parents need to quit being passive about this. Yeah. You're, if, if somebody walked into your living room and disrobed and started committing sex acts in, in front of your kids on the living room floor, you'd have a fit or you're nuts. <laughs> So why would you then just flip a switch, turn on a video, or, or, or dial into something on the internet and let the same thing occur one degree removed simply because it's not live in your living room? Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to let – and you say, well, they're going to get exposed to it someday. Yes, they are. They're absolutely going to get exposed to it someday, but not with your permission. Yeah, not until they're But when it happens ready. in your home, yeah, but, but it's true, hopefully. Uh, though this morning I've dealt with a, a, a young man who's been addicted to pornography since he was five years old. Five years old, if you can imagine that. Mm. So just, just just remember this. Parenting parenting calls us to a more proactive stance than we've ever had mm -hmm. in, in the in the history of mankind. Yes. And, and parents, you do have the right to control what and when your kids are exposed to. Yeah. So I think we've said a lot of things. One of the things that I would just say is um, be, parents be vigilant. Um, this is going to take courage and not passivity. Um, the other thing I just want to say, and, and we're running enough time here, but the whole idea is don't be afraid. I think there's just such fear like, oh, no, we're losing ground. Listen, th there's something about this is, this is a great test for the people of God. Mm-hmm. We, for 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 200 plus years in this nation's history, Christians have by and large um, been untested as yeah. far as the the quality of our faith. We could, you know, this was known as you know a Christianized. I'm not going to say a Christian nation, but this is a Christianized nation. Okay, um, where it would benefit you to be a person of faith. That is no longer true. But don't be afraid. Right. The, the, the people of God have gone through so many things. You have, you know, the, you have the church going in, and Dietrich Bonhoeffer and his testimony through the, through the Nazi regime. You have, you have Daniel leading, you know, the people of God and and through the exile. I mean, it's just so many examples of people who have been faithful, whether it's modern history or biblical history, that didn't capitulate, who stood their ground, who who stood on, on the truth who did not fear man, but feared God instead of man. And were they attacked? Yes. Did they, some of them pay with it for their lives? Yes. But at the same time, they saw God do even greater things. And I think if you just sit there with a pessimist, I just, I just want to say, don't be pessimistic. Don't be, don't be angry. Don't be fearful. But understand that it is normal and natural for the people of God to be tested in their faith. Yeah. And when you are, let it, let your light shine before men. I mean, this is the the entire New Testament was written to a people who are being oppressed and persecuted and suffering for the name of Jesus. Why do we think that we're any we're going to be any different? And I just think that is something we've got to hold on to. If this is the testing of our faith, if this cultural moment is when we have to stand up and say, I will be faithful to God and not man. I will stand on th on this line of holiness and not that line. 
and and I have to be punished for it, so be it. I will not betray God. I will not betray my faith. I will not betray my Savior, no matter what the cost. Yes. So. Yeah, great preaching, and and I say amen and amen to it. I, I would also say, when you do take that stand, and you should be taking that stand, first of all, try not to have to take it alone. Mm. You know, Edmund, Edmund Burke famously said, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Um, somebody needs to stand up. And maybe you'll be the first person to stand up, but find others who believe like you do. Demand a meeting and bring more people with you. Talk about it at your church, your social club, your uh, your neighborhood. Your, your I mean, most of us hang around people that have similar values to us. Mm-hmm. And so we can probably find others that'll go because there is there is that comfort that comes with not having to, to face opposition alone. But the second thing is this, don't let your position overpower your disposition. Mm. In other words, be have a godly position right. and a godly disposition. That's good. That's don't be so threatening. Good. Don't, you know, don't let the first words out of your mouth is, I'm gonna sue your brains out. Yeah, yeah. Now you may end up suing their brains out, but first be kind. You yeah. know? And even if you do have to take legal action, take it regretfully. Take it, take it, you know, please, let's find a way where we can find a a charitable outcome that respects my beliefs and your, you know, your commission in, in your office or whatever. Let's work toward a peaceful resolution. But please understand my desire to reach a peaceful resolution is in no way a weakness on my part that says I'm going to capitulate my values to yeah. this agenda. And and so you can, but you can do that with a smile, you can do that with graciousness, you got to do it with kindness. You ought to you ought to encourage people that are doing the right thing in their in their positions. Uh, you ought to reward people who make good decisions. Um, and in other words, don't let the message be overshadowed by our messengers. That's so good. So these so are just important. just some ideas. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a t- ton more we could have talked about, but um, navigating the culture is something we probably need to talk more about, Ben. And and the reality is it is it is a challenge right now. But we are not the first generation to face opposition yes, to our values. Absolutely. Well, I know we didn't answer probably every question you might have or deal with every issue you guys might be going through as listeners, but we do believe that there's some principles here that I hope will be beneficial to you as, uh, and I, I mean, again, I just think that every year until, unless the spirit of God moves, we're going to keep having to go through this. So, um, stay, stay faithful, stay strong and stay hopeful, um, because Jesus is the one who conquers all. And, uh, thank you again for listening to this episode of Life Talks. We'll talk to you next time.